Well, while I was browsing on Amazon a few weeks ago, I came across this device right here, which is made by Leviton. And had I had this a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have had to do any cutting, no extra splicing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to install this so that you can add a second receptacle without having to do any of that extra work. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so before I do anything with this, I wanna make sure that I turn off the circuit breaker that's supplying power to this receptacle. And then once that circuit breaker's off, I'm gonna remove the cover and then test it to make sure that the power is in fact off. Now that I've verified the power is off, now I can remove the current receptacle from the box and remove all of the wires that are connected to it. Now best practice when removing something like a receptacle is to start with the hot wires, then go to the neutral, and then to the ground. Now again, normally what I would have to do is I would have to take this box out, I would have to cut a larger hole, and then insert a double gang box to then put in two receptacles, which then is also gonna require additional splice points, which are possible failure points. Whereas with this device, it all just gets connected to this one device, just like a single receptacle. So everything is contained underneath of the terminal screws of this device. So it can cut down on possible errors or issues in the future. Now, one thing to note about this device is obviously it's got a little bit of width to it. So comparing it to your standard receptacle plate, this is gonna stick out about three quarters of an inch up to an inch further out from the wall than a standard plate. So this may not be something that you or your wife is gonna want necessarily in a kitchen or somewhere where you want that more traditional look of a traditional receptacle, but in places where you don't mind that little bit of extra thickness, this is a great solution. In fact, they have multiple options of this device that go all the way up to even hospital grade. All right, so now let's get started with the actual wiring of this, and it's incredibly easy. If we turn it over here to the back, you'll see we have two brass colored screws, which are gonna be for our hots. We have two silver colored terminal screws, which of course are for the neutral or neutral rolls, depending on your installation. And we've got the lone green ground screw. What's also cool about this is you'll see these bridges right here and right here. These are the same as standard receptacles where you can break those tabs or those bridges off and you can make one of the sides of this particular receptacle switched or you can put it on a light switch to make it a switched receptacle. Now something that is very important about this particular receptacle is it has this strip gauge up here. This is extra long and we're gonna need that extra wiring or the extra exposed wiring in order to complete this installation properly. So I'm gonna take my wiring, put it up on that strip gauge, get it measured out, mark where I need to remove more insulation from the wire, and then just strip that insulation off to where the copper that's coming from the wire is the same length as the strip gauge. And then I'll just repeat the process on my remaining neutral, or if I had other wires in here, say going on to another receptacle, I would also strip those to that length as well. If you look at each of these terminal screws, you will see that there is a hole below each of those terminal screws. That is an anchor point where we're gonna insert our wire first. However, here on the green ground screw, we're gonna actually have to make a J-hook like we normally would on a normal receptacle. All right, so the first wire that I'm gonna install is my ground wire, and that is gonna go on this green ground screw on the back. And we wanna make sure that we're wrapping it around it in a clockwise direction. And the reason we want our wires going around terminal screws in a clockwise direction is as that terminal screw tightens down, it naturally wants to pull the wire in closer to the center of the terminal screw, therefore making a better and stronger connection. All right, so now that my ground is installed, now I want to install my white neutral wire. And that's gonna get connected to either one of the silver colored terminal screws. Now again, the way that this works is I'm just gonna leave my wires straight. I'm not gonna put a J hook in them. I'm actually gonna insert it into this hole at the bottom of this terminal screw. And then once that wire is anchored in that hole, I'm going to then wrap it around that terminal screw, make it nice and tight wrapping around it. And again, even though you saw me pulling in a counterclockwise direction, this wire is actually going around the terminal screw in a clockwise direction, which is what we want. So in other words, to know if you're going counterclockwise or clockwise, you go with the start of the wire where the insulation is, and then where does it wrap around to then where it gets to its end point. In this case, it starts over here at about 11 o'clock and it wraps around to the right down here at about six o'clock. So now that that neutral wire is in place, now I can just take my screwdriver, which is gonna have to be a slotted screwdriver for this particular receptacle, and I'll just tighten down that terminal screw. 
All right, so now my neutral is installed. Now, say I had another receptacle going on down the line or I had more wiring that needed to be extended. You could then also use this terminal down here or the second terminal of the brass side as well for your load wires going on. Or of course, you could always pigtail this and then you wouldn't have to worry about these second terminal screws either. But in my case, I only have the one wire coming in. So since I'm not gonna be using the second terminal screw, I wanna make sure that it's tightened down so that it can't make contact with anything inside of the box that we don't want it to make contact with. Now, before I install my hot wire onto this, I wanted to show you really quickly what this wire looks like when you anchor it into that hole first and then wrap it around. So it looks like we have a J hook here, but if we turn it over here to the side, you'll see that it's bent in. That's where it's going into the anchor hole. And what's happening is it's creating leverage up against that hole there that makes it really easy to not only wrap it around one of these terminal screws, but it's actually going to also create an actual anchor. Once it's solidly in place in that anchor hole and wrapped around that terminal screw, that wire is not going to move at all. So it's actually a pretty ingenious feature on this receptacle. And I have seen other receptacles that have anchors like this, but not exactly like this. Hey, really quickly, if you've never seen this device before or you're finding this video to be of shockingly good value, if you could just do me a huge favor, all that I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up right down below or leave me a question or comment down in the comment section. It really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully we can let them know about this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so now I'm gonna take my black hot wire. I'm gonna put it into that anchor hole like I did with the white neutral wire. And then once it's in that anchor hole, I'm going to wrap the wire around the terminal screw. Now that I've got my black hot wire wrapped around the terminal screw, now I can tighten it down. And like I did with the silver terminal screw, I've got this additional brass colored terminal screw that I'm not gonna be using. So I also wanna tighten it down. All right, so now this is all wired up and now we're ready to put it into our box. Now, in order to install this into a single gang box like this, I'm going to have to remove some knockouts that are up here in the top and one down here on the bottom in the middle of this receptacle. Now, if I was going to be installing this in say one of these four x four metal boxes, as you can see, these holes are already punched out, which is because these metal boxes only have two places where screws can go in diagonal from each other. Then once each of the knockouts are knocked out, I will take the supplied screws that came with this receptacle. Once I've selected those screws, I'll push everything back into the box and then to insert those screws and tighten them down into the box. And of course, I'll have links down in the description for everything you see in this video, including this electric screwdriver, which I highly recommend it has saved me a ton of time on numerous projects. All right, so now we can turn the circuit breaker back on and test out these new receptacles. All right, so now that the power is back on, I'm gonna take my receptacle tester, and as long as these two lights on the right light up, then that means that everything is wired up properly and this receptacle is in working order. So let's go ahead and plug it in. As you can see, the two lights light up over here. Try the top one. Now in this case, it's two left lights because now it's upside down. Third one, everything's good there. And the fourth one, everything is good there as well. And for those of you that like to have your ground prong facing up, this also gives you that option as well. I really wish that this would have been out years ago when I've done some of these projects in the past because this really only took me about four or five minutes and the install was pretty much as easy as just hooking up your standard receptacle. Hey, really quickly before you go, even if you found this to be interesting and you thought of some places where you really could use this and put it, but maybe there are some other areas where you'd like to add a receptacle, but you want that more traditional look where it's not sticking out away from the wall about three quarters of an inch. Then I'll post a link to a video that I did in the past right up here that you can click on. It'll take you directly to it. I'll also have a link down in the description as well, where I go over how I go about installing an extra receptacle in a double gang box that has that more traditional look. So I hope that you found this to be interesting. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.